What's up, Meta Nerds? In this video, I'm gonna go over all the ships that were created for the Solo movie, but didn't make the cut. This all comes from the art of Solo, a Star Wars story book, which has tons of amazing concept art, some of which I might cover in a different video, but for this video, I just want to go over the ships and vehicles that really stood out to me the most. First up, we have some TIE variants. The art team looked back at original trilogy concept art for the fighter, which had these laser cannons sticking out of the wings, but they decided that this difference wasn't shocking enough for the leader position. These two versions of a much more menacing looking TIE were presented, with interesting notes saying that it could take laser hits, and collisions with other objects, yes. The 45 degree angle of this wing seems to be inspired by a mix of a TIE interceptor and a TIE bomber, but it would have made it different from every other TIE variant, even when considering all those in Legends. This second ball would have four heavy laser cannons, with perhaps four light laser cannons, and this standard wing configuration of the Bubba sported the same armament, but would have had four pilots in the main ball. Its creator writes that he tried to get this kind of tie in The Force Awakens, which led to the creation of the TIE SF with its gunner seat. And with the creation of the TIE Brute, we finally get to see this heavy armored, heavy laser cannon TIE fighter. Next up, we have a vehicle that was leaked before the solo movie came out, the Imperial Arrestor Cruiser, also referred to as the Tractor Beam Ship, and the Sith Carrier in early versions of the script. This thing actually did appear in the movie, but only in an Imperial recruitment film promotional video that was playing on the background of the Coronet spaceport on Corellia. Its original design was very simple, and then they started to look over original concept art for the Imperial Star Destroyer that was made by Colin Cantwell. Lucas rejected this design for the ISD we know and love today, but the Solo team decided to include it, giving it a scene where it would unleash swarms of attack craft while using its tractor beam to cause several ships to crash into each other. They also played with the idea that these three dishes could fire a converging beam that would have worked as a sort of prototype for the Death Star, but I don't know how the angles would work, and it might go against some of the things in the canon novel, Catalyst. And even more, they actually made a physical model of this ship, but whether or not there was any meaning behind the Falcon being placed in one of its hangars is unknown. I have to give a quick mention to all the different speeder bike options that were made for the chase scene on Corellia, with some ranging from cool to incredibly lame, and as you might have guessed, the amount of Corellian ships that were created is staggering, while all centering around a look that takes from pod racers and monster trucks. This next one is technically a creature, but he would have been used as a piece of mining equipment in the spice mines of Kessel. There is this version that was just a spice pooping massive teeth monster, but the version that was actually worked into the early scripts was this guy, the Wapota. It was described as a elephant sized naked mole creature that was augmented by the Pike Syndicate with these nerve control units and a cockpit while mounting this spinning digging bits muzzle. The Wapota was going to be spooked by the rebellion and sighted by L337, causing it to change course and towards Han and Chewie pushing the coaxium in what the writer said was supposed to be one of the slowest foot chases ever. This doesn't have a name, but looks too badass not to include, and also on Vandor, there was a scene where there would have been a bunch of modified CR-90 Corvettes being used. Then we get these alternative arts for the Falcon, which I'm very glad they didn't go with, but we also get to see different versions of the escape pod attachment. Some of the other proposed mods were absolutely crazy, but if you look close, you can see that they all retain the body of the YT-1300, and just kept building out, with this one getting a much more detailed drawing, making me think that they may have seriously considered this version. Definitely, definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Which one is cooler, this one, or the version we saw on screen? Moving on to Dryden Voss's ship, it seems like it was always meant to have this thin profile that would elegantly slice through the skies, but it ranged from this extremely long and flat ship to articulated wings like an Imperial shuttle, while others were lavishly ornate with white and gold paint jobs, along with some more menacing versions. These two are the most different from the others, but the art team said that they were inspired from the architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright, particularly by the Marin Civic Center. This B-Wing inspired ship was to be Effie's Nest's mothership, and would have pulled up on the coaxium train to shoot out the speeder bikes via these pods. It was made by kit bashing parts from a B-Wing, and would have been used to explain on screen how the speeder bike marauders got from planet to planet. And of course, there were a ton of different speeder bikes drawn up, including this one that for some reason just reminds me of Grievous's wheel bike. Now for what I think is by far the coolest thing we missed out on, is this massive juggernaut dwarfing tank. The clone turbo tank, also known as the juggernaut, was one of the largest and most impressive vehicles from the Battle of Kashyyyk, and this new vehicle would have been the star of the Battle of Mimban. 
Its treads alone seem taller than a Jawa Sandcrawler or the Juggernaut, while also being many times longer. Just imagine the strength of these massive cannons, while these large air intakes seem to suggest that there was an enormous engine located at the rear of this vehicle. They were so serious about including this ship that there are actually a couple different versions, with the most Star Wars looking version having a flat top, radar dish, and less rounded edges. We can see how their enormous size had a practical purpose of being able to easily roll over the series of trenches without falling in. The art director said that he imagined a shot where it would seem like a bunch of independently moving vehicles being obscured by the fog, until it started to clear up, and you can see that it was all massive sprockets and wheels of a tank that was so large that it took up the entire screen. This would have been followed by another shot of relatively tiny ATSTs sprinting out of the back of this behemoth. But wait, there's more! As the team also developed these four concept art tanks, along with this distinctly non-Star Wars looking mech. There are these battlefield versions of the Imperial Viper Droid, one of which had a ton of different weapons, and there were even a couple different variants of the AT Hauler. Some of these have vastly different designs, with many being based on the Sikorsky CH-54, while a bunch of these other versions seem to draw more from the design of the TIE Fighter. And back at the Corellia Starport, there's just a couple more vehicles I want to point out, including this seeming combo of a CR-90 in a cruise ship, and in the nearby Imperial shipyards, there were a ton of specialized ships, with variants of a super hauler, one of the designs which was used for the final AT hauler, but there was also these AT walkers specialized for moving around cargo containers, and these ridiculous spider and giraffe looking versions that were inspired by what George Lucas would see when driving past the Oakland docks. Other art shows this seemingly YT series ship, and in the background, you can see them giving the Brahatak Dornian gunship some love. So that's it for some of the best concept vehicles and ships for the solo movie. But most important of all, remember, the concept cars are always the coolest, and the force will be with you. Always.